Good afternoon, and, and thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'm Bird White, the Secretary of Transportation, and uh, we're here today to, to announce a pretty exciting, I think, uh, improvement to the traffic in Charleston that will make a big difference. I'm, uh, I'm going to let the governor tell you about it, but uh, I think everybody will be pleased with the end result when we get it done. If I can get the mic from loose, I'm going to give it to the governor and let him talk, Governor Jim Justice. Well, everyone, let, let, let me just say this real quick. First of all, it's a surely a challenging time, a challenging time for all West Virginians in lots and lots and lots of different ways. But it is especially challenging when you try to do work all across our state, like our great people at uh, the Department of Transportation, Department of Highways, Jimmy Riston, our Deputy Secretary, is with us today. But this project, from what I understand, has been in the makings for a long, long, long time. And so today, you know, the Oakwood Road Improvement Project, or the Oakwood Road Improvement whatever, is... Uh, is now becoming a reality. Now the other things about this are just this, and I don't, need, I don't know why I have that. The other things about this are just this, and that is when we first bid this, from what I understand, this project came back, i tell you what, I'm going just like this with y'all, okay, because y'all are way out there. All right, when, when they first bid this, the project came back a, uh, $30 million project. Now, after that, everybody went to work on our team and really bared down, and what did they do? They came back, and I believe Mountaineer, is that correct, got the bid, and I think the bid is like $5.8 million, and lo and behold, look at the savings and the routing that they have put together is fantastic, and the long and the short of the whole thing is we're on our way now. This will greatly improve the traffic problems. This project that we've waited on for a long, long time. <clears throat> all these great people, all these people, and many, many others, especially the guys in the back and everything, they deserve a gigantic, uh, you know, uh, appreciation level and, and a gigantic thanks from all of us. But uh, we're on our way now. We're doing good stuff. And so I'm going to pass back to Bird White. He'll tell you a little bit more about this, the way that it's designed, and there's just little little nuances about how it's designed that make it just ever so better. So nevertheless, been in the, way, been in the process a long time. Today it's a reality. We deal with a lot of other harder, I mean, really, really tough stuff every day, and you know what the briefings are like and everything else under the sun, but we want to get out and we want to keep the ball moving and everything, and that's what we're doing here. Now, one thing the governor didn't mention this is this is not a direct bond project, but this project is made possible by the fact that we sold bonds to take care of other projects, therefore loosening up some money that we could do this project with. And all that, all that is due to the governor's vision. Would not have happened had he not had the vision on the bonds to, to raise that money without raising taxes and then and then loosen up money for uh, necessary projects like the uh, Oakwood Road interchange. Now, if you all have questions, I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy Riston, who has answers, maybe, probably, and let him answer the questions. Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Governor. The... Uh, not only does the governor have great vision, uh, but he's also a bit modest. The $30 million project that we initially designed was, uh, was redirected based on a question that he had directed to his staff, that, and the staff brought the question to me, and we went back into a $30 million project, re-engineered this with, a, with an innovative approach, and saved over $25 million on this project. This, this, we used the R-Cut technology, uh, it's never been used in West Virginia before. It has been used in, the, in several places around the country. But uh, the, 
the basic idea of the project is rather than a simple interchange or intersection is the entire project functions as a intersection. So from one end of the project to the other. Uh, one of the key aspects is the uh, elimination of some of the turns and being able to loop through this in less than half the time that we normally would. And that's, that's evident by the re-signaling. We have four phase signaling out there today. Uh, the new project will have two phase signaling. That, that alone tells you we're cutting the travel time in half to get through this busy place. So uh, anytime you can, you can improve on congestion in an area like this, you make things more efficient, you make it better for the people that drive on it. So that's exactly what we like to do. But, but I gotta tell you, I'm really proud of the engineers. Uh, going back to the table after, after, after that one simple question, one simple question, and those guys sharpened their pencil, got back into this thing, and uh, turned a, turned a three-year construction project into months of construction, just months of construction. All the work on the right, in within our own right-of-way that we already have. There's no right-of-way phase necessary here other than some re utility locations. And then we throw in a little bit of uh, modern lighting as well for the project. So uh, this is a win-win for everybody. This is a big deal project. And I'll be happy to take any, any questions. Uh, our contractor is right here. Uh, you ready to start tomorrow? Well, the majority of the work, uh, the question is, what are, what are some of the uh, closures expected? Uh, most of the work is going to be accomplished at night and during off-peak hours. So uh, we're hoping for very, very minimal traffic interruptions. We're, 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 we're really uh, using the same uh, idea, the above and beyond message that we used on the Tanner Bridge in order to complete that project in 36 days. Uh, so that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're go, we're, that above and beyond is a standard practice. Uh, we'll, we'll be asking our friends at the media to help us with this. We'll be making announcements uh, all throughout the projects, and, and if you guys can help us get that word to the public so everybody can be informed uh, on, a, on a very regular basis on how to avoid the area at certain times, and then other times you'll be able you'll be direct them to go exactly where they need to go to avoid any hassles. I honestly think that these guys can do better than that completion date of May because most of that work in, that, that's going to happen after the winter shutdown will basically be some of the lighting and uh, some of the cleanup work. But I think a lot of work you'll see, you'll see most of the majority of the project done this year. Uh, would that be right, Andy? We, we think that's very possible. We're, we, we do, and, and we did that because uh, if... if the, our, our contracting partners over here, if, if we didn't have a winter shutdown accounted for in the contract, then they'd charge me for their idle time during the winter. So, uh, so we basically have to account for that. So we, we anticipate a very efficient project. Uh, that, that's a good question. The question is, uh, how much will this project help the businesses in the area? Any time that you can reduce congestion, and move, move goods, services, and people on the, the highway system, absolutely it's going to help people. Uh, th this will be a boon for this area. People avoid this area at certain times because of this traffic and of this congestion and those, those crazy movements that you have to go through to get onto the corridor out here. So th this will alleviate much of that. Okay, let me, let me ask my uh, uh, area construction engineer to come up and take those detailed questions. He, uh, he has studied these plans to death, let me tell you, so he knows this project inside and out. Hi, my name is Ryan Canfield, and I'm uh, the District 1 area engineer over this project. Um, with the lighting... There's going to be two additional signals put in at each of the R cuts, but that's just to help um, allow you to get around. Um, with the four phase, I'm not an expert on, on the four phase to the two phase, but there will be lights at each one of the R cuts to allow you to have pretty much a legal U turn. Uh, what we're doing is making everything a right hand turn and taking it away 
um, the potential of going across traffic. Um, for instance, down here at Hickory, you can currently come out of uh, this side access road and turn left. Well, that will be non-existent anymore. Uh, you will be pushed, that's actually where one of our R cuts is going, and you will be pushed right uh, to make it safer. It's not constant moving. Okay. There will be a signal there um, because, like I said, it's it's technically like a legal U-turn. U You're doing a U-turn. So there will be, in the medians, there will be a left lane turn and um, try to, it'd be like a wide pull. So you'll turn left and there will be a swing radius. So that's what those R-cuts will look like. It'll, it'll push them right, but it shouldn't affect them considerably, a great amount. Yeah, I think if you look in the background back here, we actually have some traffic control devices in place now. Uh, I think they're probably covered. They better be covered because we're not in, we don't have a work zone yet, right? So, uh, that's, uh, that's one of Secretary White and I's pet peeves is to have these work zone uh, signs and signals up when there's no work zone out there. And we, we've been talking with our partners a lot about that and working to try to correct some of that. And you've seen it. Uh, you travel for miles and miles and miles passing these cones and nobody's working. So to help eliminate training people to, avoid, to, to ignore our work zones, that's, that's exactly what we're trying to do. But uh, th this, this, th the traffic signalization and everything will be very clear. We're going above and beyond. You'll, not, you'll, you'll never hear us say that we're doing the minimal standard that the, that the whole country uses. You're never going to hear us say that anymore. We're going to do the minimal standards, but we're going to go above and beyond. We'll avoid any, any, uh, any idea that we're confusing folks, but we're going to get you enough, enough direction out there to be able to get through these work zones safely so that our contractors and our folks, too, get home safe. I think they'll end up uh, doing just like they do on most construction projects. They'll get out here and advance their subcontractor out to get their traffic control up. Uh, they'll begin any any of the minor excavation and clearing and grubbing type work that they do. Uh, so you'll see them moving out here very soon. I was actually asked to point out, if you look at the diagrams over here, that is more of what you will see with the R cuts. I have absolute faith in our contracting partners to get get on this and get it done. single time that we take another step and whether that be a step on improvement of our schools or improvement of school or improvement of our highways and the accessibility to us it makes us better that's all there is to it it makes our businesses want to come it makes us better in every way so people hate you know the fact that this has been a a mess for too long and everything and hopefully we got a solution now that'll make it a whole lot better for a lot of people. <laughs>